Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today the topic is Umar ibn al Khattab. He was one of the most prominent Muslims. He became the second caliph after the death of Abu Bakr. He was a um, caliph in year 634 to 644. His caliphate is notable for its vast conquests. He was able to incorporate present-day Iraq, Iran, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, Lebanon, Egypt, and part of Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, and southwestern Pakistan into the caliphate. During his reign, the Byzantines lost more than three-fourths of their territory, and in Persia, the Sassanid Empire ceased to exist. He had so much influence that among the Muslims. I, I, I will show you how much influence he had in front of Allah or in Quran. When God the Creator chose his prophet, it means he will be speaking to the people through that prophet, no one else. In Islam or in Quran, there are verses or rituals that came to Muhammad because of Umar's wish. So Umar, or Allah, I'm sorry, so Allah followed and granted his wish and then sent the verses to Muhammad. Let us read the hadith together. Shahi al-Bukhari, hadith number 402, narrated Umar ibn al khattab my Lord agreed with me in three things. One, I said, O Allah's Messenger, I wish we took the station of Abraham as our praying place. So came the divine inspiration. And take you, the station of Abraham, as a place of prayer. Al-Baqarah, verse 125. Two, and as regards the verse of the veiling of the women, I said, O oh, Allah's Messenger, I wish you ordered your wives to cover themselves from the men because good and bad ones talk to them. So the verse of the veiling of the women was revealed. I believe this verse, uh, chapter 24, verse 31. Three, once the wives of the prophet made a united front against the prophet, and I said to them, it may be if he, the prophet, divorced you all, that his Lord will give him instead of you wives better than you. So the verse was revealed. This is uh, chapter 66, verse 5. We can only wonder what kind of creator this is. The creator of the universe got some suggestions from the companion of the prophet and then he agreed and sent down the verses to the prophet to Muhammad who's supposed to be the prophet this is as if Harun or Aaron asked God a few things and granted and then the verses came down to Moses or Musa it is not possible for one thing um, if Allah is all-knowing, then he would not need Umar to ask him those things. Uh, he, he knew what Muhammad needs. Especially the, the verses, any of those three verses, the verses of the veiling of his wives, the verses, the verse of... Um, about the station of Abraham, especially the station of Abraham, it's a very in, important ritual during Hajj. How could not Allah reveal, reveal the, the verse before Umar mentioned it? Why didn't Allah send the verse of the veil or Surah 24 verse 31 to Muhammad before Umar mentioned it? Or sending Surah 65 verse 5 to stop Aisha and Hafsa 
from talking bad or complaining about Muhammad before Umar mentioned it. The all-knowing God waited until someone mentioned it. Now, there's even a hadith that placed Umar second after Muhammad. Narrated, okay, this from Jami At-Tirmidhi. Volume 1, Book 46, Hadith number 3686, or Arabic for, uh, reference, Book 49, Hadith number 4050. At-Tirmidhi. I will read, Narrated Uqbah bin Amir, that the messengers of Allah, the messengers of Allah said, if there was to have a prophet after me, it would have been Umar bin Al-Khattab. And this hadith created as Hassan or acceptable. Of course, I don't know what, what context or under what context Muhammad say something like that. But Umar must have shown Muhammad some qualities, might be leadership. Who knows? But then again, <laughs> why would Muhammad say something like that if he, he if he's the final prophet? That kind of thing would not be mentioned at all. He's, if he's the final prophet, then that's it, period. There's no, if there is another prophet, then after me, it would have been Umar. <laughs> that's very funny. Yes, Umar was the second caliph. But in my opinion, Umar supported Abu Bakar to be the first caliph as a political move. Abu Bakar was a caliph for two years. Abu Bakar listened to Umar anyway. Umar didn't want to look greedy, you know. Umar was smart. He must be at least a smart guy, for sure. And, and he, when he was younger, actually, he was not a, he was a drunk. Umar was a drunk. His father didn't like him, even. Anyway, so, Abu Bakar listened to Umar because of the influence of Umar. Abu Bakar collect, asked Zaid ibn Tabit to collect Quran. We can read it from Sahih al-Bukhari 7191, narrated Zaid ibn Tabit. Abu Bakar sent for me owing the, to the large number of casualties in the battle of Al-Yamama. While Umar was sitting with him, Abu Bakar said to me, Umar has come to, my, to me and said, a great number of Qaris of the Holy Quran were killed on the day of the battle of Yamam, Al-Yamama. And I am afraid that the casualties among the Qaris of the Quran may increase on other battlefields, whereby a large part of the Quran may be lost. Therefore, I considered it advisable that you, Abu Bakar, should have the Quran collected. I said, how dare I do something which Allah's messenger did not do? Umar said, by Allah, it is something beneficial. Umar kept on pressing me for that till Allah opened my chest for that for which he had opened the chest of Umar. And I had, in that matter, the same opinion as Umar had. I will stop there. I'm, I'm not going to read the whole hadith. So... It is his idea that we now, or Muslims now, have Quran as a the whole book, a, a book, Mushaf. In that, uh, from that hadith, I, I I need to make sure that you know what Kari is. Kari is a people who memorize Quran, but of course, those people are not the same as the people today. People today memorize Quran, the whole Quran, the whole book, the whole Mushaf. 
those caries, they, they did not memorize the whole book or the whole Quran. They may memorize parts of Quran, maybe a couple of chapters, a few chapters, or one chapter, or maybe a few, a few verses even. So it's different compared to today, what's called Hafiz. So the order of compiling the Quran into book into a book or mushaf definitely was from Abu Bakr, but the idea was from Umar. If it was not from Umar, Abu Bakr would disregard that kind of idea. Maybe because this came from Umar, who. Over time, gain some influence. So, verses from Quran came down because of, because Umar asked. The compilation of Quran was Umar's idea. The expansion of Islam was because of Umar. Well, you see, that's because of uh, his influence that make. Islam grew or when they fight the generals listen to Umar because of his influence and maybe charisma right no wonder Muhammad said Umar bin al-Khattab could be the next prophet please note that this is all from Sunni Sunni's view not Shia Shia hate Umar as matter of fact Shia hate Abu Bakar Umar Uthman and Aisha. They have different views. Thank you for listening. Whether you love Umar or hate Umar or don't care about Umar, God bless you all. Have a nice life.